Um, so this week we're going to talk about ecdysis, which is the molting process that lots of insects go through. A lot of us would just call it molting, um, but there is a more specific word for it, which is ecdysis. Um, and this is just going to be a little short one. Go through like some of the little um, issues or curiosities uh, that kind of come up in the general process of ecdysis. Um, so ecdysis isn't just insects. Of course, we know spiders do it, crustaceans do it, um, even nematodes do it. And they are sorted all together into a clade, ecdysozoa. Um, and it has been genetically not quite proven, but heavily suggested in the past few years. You see uh, 2008, uh, strongly supports that the, all of these have a common ancestor, um, including nematodes, which was kind of remarkable to me. Um, so, uh, something you might, that seems like it might be kind of obvious with ecdysis, but is a little more confusing when you think about it closely, is that insects molt to get bigger most of the time, um, but their exoskeletons are rigid. And so if you think about a, let's say, an insect leg emerging from the old smaller exoskeleton, if it were completely rigid all the time, how would it get bigger? How would you fit a larger leg into a smaller exoskeleton? It's not like folded up in there or anything. And the answer to this question is that exoskeletons aren't completely rigid right after the mole. They're, called, they're in this state that's called callow, which you can see they're usually kind of pale, they're soft, they're a little elastic. And so insects and other crustaceans and things like that use this stage to make their, um, to make their limbs bigger. That while their legs are flexible and all their other appendages, they will pump fluid from their abdomen into the rest of their body, kind of inflating the rest of their body, as weird as that sounds. Um, you can see this happening with the wings. That's one of the most common ways you'll see this happen. But it actually does happen with all of the appendages of the insect when it comes out. Um, so if you see something like a spider or a nymph of a certain insect or something with a small, seems like a smaller than normal abdomen, it's possible that it's just malnourished, but it's also likely that it just molted. That's a w one way of telling when something has freshly molted besides like color or something like that. And here you see a cicada um, performing the kind of typical process of ecdysis for insects at least, which is that you see a kind of split along the thorax, which emerges first, and then the, the head and the abdomen kind of follow out as the insect kind of folds in and passes through that hole in the exuvia, which is the old exoskeleton. So I'm just going to show a few examples of how, how you can observe this. The most dramatic examples of this are in uh, when an insect decloses, which is when the adult emerges from the pupa or from the nymph exoskeleton. And so you can see here in this dragonfly, it'll emerge. It's a little less dramatic than in things like butterflies, which you'll see next. But you can see here, it has a slightly enlarged looking abdomen here, and it's a little pale over the course of this. And this is just minutes, so you won't see the dramatic kind of change in color that you see over a uh, dragonfly's lifetime. Um, this process of, it's almost similar to tanning, um, the process of the hardening of the exoskeleton of an insect. Um, it, occurs over a long period of time, but the first stage is the most important for it to just become rigid. But you'll see here, as the wings inflate, you can notice a slight, uh, the abdomen getting slightly smaller here. And in these last photos, it, it's even more dramatic. You can see it's thinner, it's uh, much more extended and straight in the shape that the dragonfly will have throughout its adult life. And so just another example, here's a monarch butterfly closing. And what I thought was cool about this video, and this isn't a time lapse or anything, so you won't be able to see the whole process here, 
Um, but something I thought was cool was that you can kind of see the abdomen doing some of the pumping of that fluid here. You can see the kind of action it's taking to pump fluid into its wings, especially here. That's the most important thing that happens for butterflies because they're in a pupa, their legs are able to come out pretty much the size they need to be because inside the pupa, they're not like trapped in the sheath of an old, smaller leg. Um, so for a butterfly, most of this pumping action is happening for the wings. So you'll see butterflies right after they close, kind of hanging on, obviously not be able to fly yet, pumping this fluid into the wings until they become as big as they need to be and until they are not callow anymore and they're rigid. So yeah, that's just a nice quick little rundown on ichthysis and that's the fun fact for the week.